I think cinema is a good thing, partly just because of the shared passion. Um, a lot of people say cinema is going to die, but I don't think so. If we keep it like this, we're very, very friendly, very outgoing, and very happy to talk about anything and everything. I guess. Uh, um, I opened the site uh, June uh, last year. I have worked here for uh, about seven and a half years. Uh, you meet loads of really cool people. Uh, the, the bonus is most people that come here want to be here. Going to the cinema has always been a treat, a great place to go out on a date, hang out with friends and family, or just go somewhere to escape reality. Today we are going to have a look at the cinemas in Stratford-upon-Avon and see how they have changed throughout the years, and how cinemas have adapted to their modern day audience. Whilst there are two cinemas in Stratford, they offer two different things. The picture house gives us a feel of nostalgia, whereas the everyman brings us to the modern day era of cinema. The Picture House Company was founded in 1989 and is actually owned by Cineworld. This particular site we are visiting today was opened uh, due to a petition that was signed in 1997 for Stratford-upon-Avon to get their own local cinema. I'd say the biggest change is kind of the growth of um, more live experience. So we get kind of live museums, obviously live theatre. The RSC do a lot of their testing of their shows here but kind of the live broadcasts, I think that's the kind of new market and that's what we've seen really developing. If we're constantly looking to improve ourselves and better ourselves as staff members and so if customers suggest a way uh, to do something better, we take on board that feedback and make sure we find a way to improve it and incorporate it into our, into our daily life here. I think as an alternative to streaming, we just have to make it about the kind of the unique experience. A lot of films are made to be seen on the big screen. Um, if you take Dunkirk, for example, that was quite a cinema experience. There was a lot of sound and visual things that would, would have just suited it being in a, in a cinema screen. However much the technology at home makes it closer to what you get in a cinema, it's just, to, to a lot of people, it's just not the same as sitting there in a community of, of people of, with different reactions, hearing people laugh, and have their emotional reactions to everything as opposed to just sitting at home on your own. There is something uh, about a collective group of audience members sat in the same room experiencing the same thing at the same time. Um, it's similar to that in theatre, there's a certain magic in the air where if, if a film is really good it creates this kind of atmosphere that everyone's completely focused and engaged and they can take their alcoholic beverages and snacks into the screen and have just generally um, sit comfortably in our screen and have a, a very lovely time. There's pros and cons to us being a smaller cinema. I think the negative is obviously we've only got two screens here, so we have to be a bit more selective in our film choices. It's just a more kind of tailored experience. We get a lot of people coming in here just remarking on how unique it feels. Um, if you look around the bar, you can see we've kind of got staff members that have painted like signs of pubs from different films and different film characters and we've got tables and lampshades and stuff made of VHS tapes. Here it's more of like an event people come out to the cinema to, to watch a film, it, it, that's their day, that's what they want to do. When it comes to the multiplexes, um, they are easier cinema. It's, it's getting many people through the door, many people out buying snacks. We have a, a large group of regulars who come in and they know what to expect because they appreciate uh, the service, the uh, the, uh, the service we offer as staff, and the services we offer as a as a cinema, um, and it's built quite a large kind of gathering and a following. So, um, if you look around the cinema, there are a number of layers to this uh, to us that you might not you know, that's very easy to glaze over. Such as you'll see just sat in this little um, uh, just in this little room, the photo frames that's done by a photography group called Stratford Clicks. So they're a local photography group who take inspiration from us and what we're showing at the time and then take photos for us to just be able to display in the cinema. So a lot of these um, your very yellow um, photos that you're seeing is them taking inspiration from yellow, uh, the yellow submarine showing that we had a, a little while ago. Um, and they asked if they could display some of their work here and we said, yeah, absolutely. And 
there's all sorts of little nuances to films and little acknowledgements and little Easter eggs. There's quotes upon the walls. There's Easter eggs uh, to films, and there's a, there's a lot of artwork um, that relates to uh, film, and uh, that is all done by local people as well. So there's a very large sense of community and a very um, we we find that we've brought a lot of people together, and people have made friends here who were previously strangers. So there's a very large friendly community following um, for us here. Yeah. I think partly what we try and do as a role in the community is about access. That's kind of really important for us. We have a club called Silver Screen that gives five pound tickets to people who are retired. Um, we're, we've just started doing uh, autism friendly screenings and we've got a dementia friendly screening that we do as well. And it's just trying to really hit inclusivity just make sure that every person knows and feels welcome here and can kind of make it in and enjoy the experience. Even if you think you might not fit in, um, a large portion of our staff are quite big into films and we're very passionate about cinematography and we can tell you what makes a good and bad film, etc. So I think each and every one of us has a very strong interest in film and we can even talk to you about what we like and dislike about what's currently in the screen. So. Um, yeah, don't be don't be shy to come talk to us because we're always looking to engage with with our uh, with our customers. The Everyman Cinema Company was founded in 2000. However, the Everyman was originally a theatre back in 1933 until Daniel Brock bought it and turned it into a cinema. The site we are looking at today is just under two years old. Um, working in the cinema is really good. Um, we get a lot of locals, also a lot of tourists. Um, we have quite a few regulars, which is quite nice to see the same faces, um, and it's just a good opportunity to get to know the community a bit more. Yeah, um, with the multiplexes, we don't we don't really see them as massive competition. Not because we don't believe they have a good product, because a lot of the multiplexes do have a good product. Um, but we're a different product. So when people come here, they do come for a different experience. They come for that customer service. They come for those sofas. They come to get walked into the screen, the screen announcements at the start. It's it's a different experience when you go to a multiplex where it's a little bit more uh, aimed at volume, where it gets as many people in as you can, get as many people out in out in out. Whereas you actually want people to come in have a coffee, have something to eat, relax, enjoy the film. We don't rush. Our auditoriums, you'll notice, are a lot smaller than normal multiplex, um, and that's because we, we, d we wouldn't be able to give the kind of service we give if we started putting 250 seats into one of our auditoriums. That's why our highest one here is 144 seats, whereas you go to a multiplex, you'd be looking at 250 on average, and, and that is because we want to give that experience. We wouldn't be able to give that experience with, with, with the highest seating. Um, I think we're a lot more personal than the big multiplexes are. Um, the staff are often the same, you'll see them on the same day. Um, we get to know the locals a lot more. Um, we also offer just a nicer experience than the multiplexes. Our seats are more comfortable. We do food and drink in the screens. Um, and the food's nicer than it is in a lot of multiplexes. So there's a lot of talk about actually, is this, how is the cinema industry going to do? Um, the cinema is booming. It's been progressively getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not 100% recession proof, but as businesses go, it's, it's, it's not far off actually. It, there's always a constant, um, a constant need for film, constant need for cinema. With regards to things like Netflix, they've started now releasing some of their films at the cinema, because they understand that actually a lot of people want to see it on the big screen. Um, I mean, take for example, um, Annihilation, um, the recent film that was um, released in America on the box office, didn't do massively well. Um, so when it came to, England, um, to the UK, the distributors sold it to Netflix because they were like, we, we, we'll lose money by putting this on the, on the, in the cinemas. Um, but actually, there was a big hand for it to be seen on the big screen because people didn't want to watch it at home because of the way the film was. They wanted it at the cinema. So it actually got a limited release and every man's cinema showed quite a, lot of, um, quite a lot of the films of Annihilation because there was a clamour for it. So even though it is on Netflix, people still paid X amount of money to come to the cinema and watch it. And you'll notice there's a... Big, big difference, I think, by watching at home, watching at the cinema. So in the community, I think when, when I opened it, one of the things I really looked at was, with Stratford, we, we as a site, as every man, we're here for the locals, whereas most people in Stratford, everything's getting built for the tourists. So whenever somebody in the house gets built, I'll be grateful for that'll bring the tourists in, or that'll bring the tourists in. Well, actually, we don't really get tourists in the cinema. You don't really go on holiday to go to the cinema. It's not, I mean, people do, but it's not, not regular. So really, we, we are for the local community because that's what predominantly people use. A lot of the villages outside our catchment areas, Wellsbourne, uh, Henley and Arden, um, we've brought people in from Warwick, uh, Claverton, all those sort of surrounding villages and people in Stratford. Um, and we do that, we do, I'm regular with the uh, tweet up groups in the area, with the local bloggers, 
uh, Strathmaven Online do a lot of work with us. Um, lots of the local companies, we donate to quite a lot of local charities as well. We donate to the Christmas light switch on in Stratford. So all these bits and bobs we do just to try and keep ourselves in touch with the community. Um, so the two clubs we have are the Silver Screen and the Baby Club. It's for young parents, or old parents even, I suppose, um, who have young babies. Um, we can't get out as much because they're a little bit more restricted because whenever they come out they've got to pay for a babysitter or they've got to do something with the baby. Well actually we allow them to come in, we have the lights on a little bit lighter, um, they have a tea, they have a bit of cake. We put a film on that they're interested in, not necessarily the baby because the baby's too young to understand what's going on on the screen. Um, and, and it's just it's a fun couple of hours for them to get out of the house for a little bit, so that's quite nice. We do silver screen um, as well, which is in the same sort of vein, but it's for the older generation. Uh, so it's a little bit of a cheaper ticket price and they get hot drinks to get a bit of cake and we put a nice film on for them. Um, also, we do events on weekdays. Uh, on Monday, we have a salsa night, which is quite fun. Tuesday, we have a quiz, and Wednesday, we have an open mic night, which is always a hoot. I feel like the, the clubs we do do bring in a lot of the locals. Um, on the quiz night, I think we have one team who's come for every single quiz night, at least, and other ones who, when they can make it, they tend to make it. Um, same thing for, for the open mic night. The people who run it, they know quite a few of the locals here who do music. Um, so therefore we get a lot of the same performers and therefore they bring in a lot of the locals again on a regular basis. Um, the Salsa Night, that's a very regular thing. Um, they'll bring the same people in, they'll get more people involved, get some people active, lets people have a good time. The Picture House has a variety of different clubs that bring many different guests. One that stands out in particular is the Big Screen. This is where parents and guardians can watch their movie with their babies. However, the baby must be under the age of one, and anybody without a baby is not allowed. It's a, it's a regular showing, so one showing a week. Um, it's typically a whatever's the hot thing. That it's just a safe space for parents with babies to come to. We keep the house lights up. It's kind of a relaxed performance for them, and it's just all about making sure that they feel welcome. It's a very uh, small, intimate group of regulars that we get. Yeah, E4 Slack is good, but we set up a... It's, we've, they've been doing that for longer than I've actually worked here. <laughs> biggest one we ever had they did Monsters University which completely sold out and these are free for students uh, obviously it's directly geared at students who are members of our either our student members members or members of the E4 Slackers Club which is their thing which is completely free to sign up to their um, club and then every month or every couple of months they license a movie sometimes it's a cool classic uh, Big Lebowski for example so it introduces I mean not just introduces the students to the cinema but if you're a student who loves cinema, to have a free movie to come to every month, uh, at least you can still get out and get to the cinema if, if you're struggling and here and there, but and they're usually really good films as well. I'd say the club that brings in the most community is probably uh, Kids Club, which we have every Saturday morning. This week's, this Saturday show is Incredibles 2, um, which is already quite a busy showing, um, but 45 minutes before Incredibles 2, we'll have some Incredibles 2 related activities going on in, in the bar area where um, kids can colour in or they can make uh, some arts and crafts, usually of their like characters or things that relate to the film in some way. So with Beauty and the Beast, we made um, little teapots out of coffee cups and such, and it was a very kind of nice, artsy way to bring... Um, to bring the community together. The bar is actually available for private hires of events. I think the bar's almost as big a draw as the screen itself. It's got a life in and of itself. Um, we have a monthly film quiz in here. We have folk nights and acoustic nights and stuff. We'll have people ask to hire the bar for private parties or for film screenings. Um, I know we've got a baby shower coming up at the start of next month. We pride ourselves heavily on being able to bring the community together and be a central hub um, and I think for that we are quite fortunate. We are placed slap bang in the town centre. My memories of films as a kid, my favourite movies, I watched in a cinema. I didn't watch it at home for the first time. Did most people that come here want to be here? I love working here. It's just a really friendly, relaxed environment. Mm -hmm.